Hey, good morning to you. Welcome to Psalms for the Day. You may have heard part of it having a little technical problem. Uh, Matt and Steve, they leave me on my own for these sometimes, and it always gets pretty interesting in the technical world. So thanks for your patience, or maybe it's watching again. Maybe you'll, you'll see some things so uh, differently. Psalm chapter 12. Known by some as the psalm of false or faithful words. And uh, boy, isn't that a subject we need to uh, hear frequently on? But this is more of the ears around David who writes this psalm on his eight-stringed or composes it for his eight-stringed harp. And he is very discouraged with what's going on around him. He opens up, in fact, saying, help, Lord. That's his opening prayer. That's a great prayer right there. Reminds perhaps you also in Matthew 14 when Jesus is coming out towards Peter and the fellows in the boat in the middle of the night, three in the morning. And there Peter hops out per invitation of Jesus. But then he begins, he's, begins to feel like he's sinking. And uh, Lord, save me is his quick, direct, to the point, no vain repetitions there, of uh, that prayer that he offers to Jesus and the big, strong grip of Jesus hoists him up. Always good stuff there. Interesting, from a generation from me ago, the World War II generation, my parents' generation, two very influential men in the 1940s, one on the continent, Adolf Hitler. And Hitler was one who unfortunately, sadly, his awful words were very influential. His venomous words were those of hatred, of lies, of anger, war, and pride. Just awful from the pit itself. But then across the channel, on the little island, of Britain, there's Winston Churchill with inspiring words of challenge and hope, of encouragement. Oh, how different those words and the effect of those words very much were. But David here is, is troubled by the words of the culture, the people around him. And he's, well, let's just get into it. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. The faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak idly, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that speaks proud things, who have said, with our tongue, we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. The great swelling pride of those around David, those whose, those whose speech he continually heard. But the psalm doesn't stop there. In, in, in verse 5, fortunately, there's a switch from these words of lies, emptiness, flattery, deception, and double talk. Confusing words. Discouraging words. But now in quotations, verse 5, the first time in the psalms, we actually have words voiced from God. The Lord speaks here for the oppression of, for, of the poor, for the sighing of the needing. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. Just that verse, that last line right there, verse 5. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. Are you yearning for yourself, for your loved ones? Are you yearning? The Lord, is he's your go-to. He's your hope, your strong tower. Then David goes on and says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. Charles Spurgeon said on this that the Bible has passed through the furnaces of persecution, literary criticism, philosophic doubt, and scientific discovery, yet 
has lost nothing but those human interpretations which clung to it as alloy to precious ore. The experience of the saints, he goes on, has tried it in every conceivable manner, but not a single doctrine or promise has been consumed in the most excessive heat. End of quote. The Bible stays true. It, 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 it can't be discouraged. It's always full of life and truth. Why? Because Jesus occupies it. He's found, as the Psalms and the writer of Hebrews declares, he's found in the volume of the book. It stands in the best of excessive heat. Just ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Give their story a look. Now, David writes in verse 7, You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. You know, in this, verse 8, it's not much different than verse 1. The circumstances between these eight verses seemingly hadn't changed one iota. So what's the use? Well, there was great change. Because though the circumstances didn't change, the psalmist changes. David changes. He hears from God, and his soul is affected. Circumstances not, but his soul is relieved, comforted, directed, and made at peace. He's made at peace. He's reminded of God's goodness. So this day, if it's heating up around you, if the words you hear around you and the Maybe your own walls of your own house or from the news or your neighbor or even your own family members. Remember that the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. God will keep you. God will preserve them for this generation forever. Remember, he's got you forever, and that includes today. So God bless you. God bless us. We need him. We're blessed. We are a blessed people to be in the palm of his hand on this very day. So, Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this reminder of your great love for us. And we say like the psalmist, help, Lord. Help, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this day. Go with him. Look forward to seeing you again when we, as soon as we get a chance. But never hesitate to call or text or drop by. Uh, all that information is on the website and take give that a look. So God bless you. Love you guys. Let's go with him.